Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm gonna to be showing you how to use Bimalink. Now, if you don't know what that is, that is the diagnostics app from Bimacode. Now, many of you already know what Bimacode is and you would have seen on my previous videos how to use that and walking you through what that app actually is all for coding. Now, Bimalink is the diagnostics app. You have Kali, which has got it all built in, but where Bimacode is so big because it uses the expert mode, they've had to make a separate app for Bimalink. Now, to use Bimalink, you are gonna need one of these Vgate iCar Pro adapters. They are readily available on Amazon and on eBay, and I will link these in the description below for you guys to go and buy them. They're only around 25 pound. So let's get onto this video, and let's show you how Bimalink actually works on your car. What? God damn, get it done with you. When the blow up now, everybody's so unusual with it. Shit. But said times in his rhymes, cause his memories. We run into New York, so you know. Okay, guys, so as you'll see, we've got Bimalink loaded on my phone. Now, this app is available for Android and iOS. Now, as I did say in the intro, many of you are not aware. Bimalink is basically just a diagnostics app and it can check many other functions on your car. Bimacode will not allow you to do that as whole like Carly will, but Bimacode works out a lot cheaper than Carly in the long run. Now, obviously, I've got a collaboration with Bimacode Theirself and Bimalink, which is the same company, and they have unlocked both apps for me. Now, Bimmer code will do all your coding and it can also be used for your advanced coding as it has expert mode. That is only $29.99 on the App Store. Bimmer Link is the same price as well, which is $29.99 and that can read and delete all your error codes. Now, I want to see how accurate Bimmer Link really is. Now, their coding app is absolutely brilliant and it is something that I wanted to come to the market for a very, very long time for BMW enthusiasts because Carly didn't hold up to its expectations for enthusiasts who want to dive deeper into their cars. So we're going to go ahead and see Bimalink and see how accurate this is, obviously compared to the Carly Diagnostics. Now, as many of you guys know, Carly Diagnostics is not accurate and is also very slack compared to what you'd get on a normal scanner. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is connect to Bimalink and find out how this works. So what we're going to go ahead and do is just click connect. Then it will say Bimalink would like to use your Bluetooth. We're going to click OK. Now it should find the adapter on its own. Now the adapter is plugged into the OBD port and it is flashing up so it should find it. And as you'll see there, it found my car. Now, if you see here, this is the layout of Bimalink and that didn't have to identify the control units, do this and do that. That's purely because there is no need. This is just a diagnostics app. Now, if you'll see here, we've got sensor values. So you can check all the data streaming from the sensors itself. So if we just click edit and we do add, you can see here, you've got all the different sensors from sensor ambient temperature, all the temperatures that you would need to check the data streams of your car. And you can even check your coolant temp sensor. You can check many different things with this actual app now it is really really good because if you see here you can see the cool temperature which we'll just click that one because i know that's the one a lot of you are going to want to be checking so we'll just click that one and we'll see done then it will load the values and you'll see there it says 55 celsius now if we do start log you can actually do a log while driving around with it plugged in to see if it's actually overheating or reaching the desired temperature correctly. Now, I would have done oil temperature, but bearing in mind mine's got the Mosselman oil cooler, my oil temps are gonna be a lot lower than what someone would on their normal oil cooler. Therefore, there's no point me actually putting that one on. Now, if you see here, when I go to click stop log, you'll see it say save or delete. Now, obviously I'm just gonna delete it because I don't need to keep it. But if we edit that again and we add another one, we can then do all the torque coming to the wheels. We can do anything we basically want. We can do the exhaust camshaft position sensor, engine oil temperature, engine oil level. So if we just click engine oil level as well, we'll just click done. You can see there the engine oil level is 255. 
Now, you would have to work that out to see exactly in millimeters what that actually means. And that could still be going up, bearing in mind that the engine is still cold and warming up. Now, if we click add again, we could do oil. We're going on to oil temperature, maybe. Oil pressure, oil pressure, oil temperature. And we'll click done, then click done again. And you'll see there, the oil temperature is 50 Celsius, which is staying a bit lower than actual the coolant temperature which is actually good and that's what that Mosselman oil cooler should be doing. So now you get a drift of actually what you can do with the sensor values and you can also log that while driving or while to actually see what's wrong with your car. Now on the dashboard, we'll see what this one does. We can click edit. So what you've got here is the layout that you can actually make a whole dashboard on your phone and then you can plug it up to your phone holder in your car and watch the whole dashboard to actually see what's going on with your car while you're driving so you can set it if you wanted to the boost pressure you could actually set the oil temps and just watch it as you're actually driving that's what the dashboard layout is actually for and it's really really good i mean a lot of you actually like that especially if you want it for your turbocharged cars now we do have asd here which is active sound design many of you guys don't know what that is that's bmw's way of putting the exhaust sound or the engine noise through the speakers now you can turn that on and off and i've got that on if you turn it off it will not stay permanently off if you remove the dongle it will only stay off as long as you have your dongle connected to your car to fully remove active sound design you will have to code it out which you can do using bimmer code now i have got it on um, and i actually really like it some people don't like that but i do so i've actually got it on and i won't be coding that out now here you've got your 12 volt battery so obviously you can check your battery uh, status as well to see how well your battery is holding charge and everything else so as you can see here it detects an ae ah agm battery you've also got it a 67 percent battery state of charge mileage last battery replacement there is none because this has got an original bmw battery which i am going to be changing over because it's been there for like the last nine years so this car is due a new battery. So that's why you're not seeing a new battery here because they, this car has never had a new battery fitted. Bearing in mind, this has the start-stop function. It needs a start-stop battery, which ain't cheap, which I have got on the way and I am gonna be changing over and replacing on this car. Now, if you see here, they've got register new battery. Now with that, you can actually register your new battery on your car with ease without the need of having to use ISTA or another scan tool. Now, if you do change the amps an hour battery, so for instance, you change from 80 to 100 or 120, you will need to adjust that in the coding in the FEM on BIMA code, which I'll show you in another video how to actually do that. Or you can use eSystem to do that as well, but you will need to change that if you buy a different battery to what was fitted with your car. Now, the best way when changing a battery is to stay with the same battery or try and find the exact same one that your car come with from the factory and just replace it like for like. So you just have to register the new one and be done with. So that is what the 12V battery is for. Now in error memory, we'll go into error memory and it will tell you to select all the control units you wish to scan. So we're gonna click all of them and just click continue and then what it will do is now read all the errors now we will see how accurate this thing really is now when i've scanned it with ista it shows no faults now if this was carly it would show sporadic faults that you wouldn't even think you even have and you'll be chasing a fault that doesn't even exist and i know that because i could plug carly up and it'll tell me i've got faults on the car which i don't and that happens to a lot of people and they're chasing faults and i tell them all the time when they send me their fault report that most of them faults are made up by Carly itself. Now it's only showing one error on the car itself. So we'll find out what that is. Now that could be for the steering wheel wrong variant, but we'll soon find out now. Now if that actually picks that up, which is the dozen, this is really, really accurate um, for fault codes because that wouldn't even pick it up anywhere else. Now we've got one in the car access system which is the multi-function steering wheel wrong variant, as you see there. So that goes to show you that this scan tool is very, very accurate and precise. Because if I'm honest with you, ISTA cannot pick that fault code up and it says everything's green. 
the only scan tools that can pick that up are my highly advanced programming tools that I use on the bench and on the car that can pick that up. Nothing else picks that full code up. Therefore, this shows how accurate and how intense this diagnostics tool really, really is to the point it goes that deep and manages to find that. Now, the wrong variant is just can be changed with the coding and I can change that very, very easily in my system. So I'm not worried about that. And we will show you how to actually change that. But if you see here, all my other modules are clear. So what we'll do is come out of that now, then we'll go to info memory. Now the info memory, a lot of people ain't aware of what this is. The information memory is previous full code stored in the information, which haven't been completely erased because they come back and a lot of people are not aware of them. So if we click continue, I might be in shock and end up finding quite a lot in my info memory itself. And this is the memory that ends up coming up. As you see, there are five errors found that people do not clear fully and especially garages. So if garages try and clear the diagnostics codes, you will end up with the fault codes being stored in the information memory. And this helps stop people thinking they can delete the diagnostics codes and you won't be able to find out the fault. Now, if you see here, there's 13 errors found on the car in the info memory. Now, these will be all fault codes previous to my ownership, which have come up and people have replaced the parts. So if you see here, these are all integrated chassis management, roof function center, and a lot of other codes. Now up here, you can click save and you can generate a report of all the required fault codes in the car. And you'll see here, there's a lot of different fault codes. Now you can choose to delete them, which we're gonna go ahead and do. And we're just gonna clear all the errors because none of them are relevant. This is just all in the info memory. Now you do wanna clear your info memory once you've actually know half of the faults are rectified, which I do because the majority of the faults that were on this car have now gone. Now, if you see that errors have now been cleared, but as I said, you can save it with just that page. You can send it to now someone or keep it for your records. Or if you need help with the fault code, you can print it and then, you know, send it to your mechanic. Now we do have permanent errors as well. So what we'll do here is click continue. Now this will scan for any permanent errors that ain't sporadic or ain't like um, pending, for instance, these are do with fault codes that ain't coming and going. These are ones that are literally permanent and causing a major issue that need to re be replaced immediately and require immediate attention. That's what permanent errors are. So the way to correct permanent errors is very, very simple. If you load it up and you have fault codes in permanent errors, you wanna correct that problem immediately. So for instance, if your car's not running right or it's literally when you start it, it's having a misfire or something's absolutely wrong. Per permanent errors is where you'll come to to find out what's actually causing that because it will be stored in permanent errors. Now, if you see here, when we're loading permanent errors, we don't have any errors here. And that just goes to show you, this is what ISTA scans itself. ISTA scans for permanent errors or anything that doesn't communicate properly on the system. That's why if you saw in my error memory, the MFL for the multifunction steering wheel, wrong version was only showing up in error memory, but it wasn't showing up in permanent errors. And that's because it's not an error that needs or requires immediate attention. Therefore, it will not throw it up here because it's not something that's gonna cause my engine damage or to me to crash or something that I need to deal with immediately. So that is what your permanent errors will be used for. Now, if we come out of that, we now have service reset. Now, as you can see here, we've got engine oil, brakes front, brake rear, brake fluid, and vehicle check. Now, we can actually reset the service counters if we actually wanted to via this app, which is really, really good. This will reset your CBS data, which is your condition-based servicing on your car. And therefore, this is what makes Bimali really, really good. Now, you can also do that with Carly, and many of you are gonna say also you can release the electronic handbrake, which is true. Bimalink doesn't offer that yet, but I'm sure they will in a later update. But if you can get a drift of what this can do now, to the point it can reset your services, it can scan the info memory, the error memory, the permanent error memory as well. It can do all of them things and also reset all your services. Bimalink is a more useful and cheaper app than all of the others put together. This app, I do highly, highly recommend. And let me say to you, I'm not just saying that, this app, the layout is so nice. The UI is nice. How quick it connects 
It makes it simple and easy. With Carly, you have to select the car, let it connect, then read out. It is very, very long and it can get very expensive very quickly based on what you want to do. With Bimalink, you click connect, it finds the car, finds the errors, loads up the app immediately. There is no selecting the car, it just loads it straight up and it gives you all the features that this your car will have based on what it finds. The reset service function is very, very clear and easy to understand. So you can see it all there. It shows you the remaining 39% on my brakes front, with brakes rear 27%, brake fluid 85%, vehicle check 93%, engine oil 83%. So you can see there, how many times service counters have been actually reset as well. So it shows you here that my rear brakes have been changed five times, seven times, um, the service has been done eight times, six times and five times. So you can see everything clearly and detailed there. So as you see there, that is the Bimalink app. Now, as I said to you, this was sent to me along with Bimmer code and they were activated for me based on the company who sent them to me. Now. I am really, really grateful to have these apps alongside all my other apps and you guys will probably be seeing me use these apps a lot more than anything else and that's purely because I know most of you rely and use these apps heavily, especially in the US and they are really, really good for what they actually do and to be honest, it's a really, really good handheld scanner to have with you at any time. The dongles are cheap, you don't have to worry about losing them, you can leave one in your glove box, keep one at home and you can always have your diagnostics and your coding on hand whenever you need it now depending on your adapter you can just click the settings button down here and you can select which adapter you have right here and you just set it to your adapter and if you can see there even use carista it uses a lot of the different adapters on the market that you might already have in your house to use this app and therefore it is an app i do highly highly recommend you can see all the different settings there you can customize and you've got their other app as well, which is Bimmer code, which is linked down there. So I therefore do recommend this app. And if you are in the market wondering if you should buy it, the truth is you should go and buy Bimmer link and make sure to get Bimmer code at the same time because they are both really, really brilliant apps with really brilliant user interfaces and very easily laid out for the enthusiast and the beginner in mind also for the beginners to be able to use and it connects to your car easily it loads up quickly very very accurate and i've had no issues in the time i've been using their apps so that is my review complete for bimalink okay guys so as you've seen there i've now shown you the bimalink app and like i say it is really really incredible bimmer code and bimalink together are really powerful apps that i believe every BMW enthusiast and anyone with a BMW should have on their phone. So I will link the adapter in my description and in the comments below. As I said, it is £25 for the adapter from Amazon. You may be able to get it cheaper elsewhere, but I'm not sure. And also it is gonna be £29.99 for the apps on the App Store. So I hope you guys have actually enjoyed this thorough detailed video of you how to use Bimalink and all its features it can actually do. Like I said, I think it's absolutely incredible and this should have been around many, many years ago. And Bimmer Code and with their other app, Bimalink will wipe out the other mobile dongle companies like Carly for a very, very long time because they don't limit your abilities on what you can and can't do. Their diagnostics is very, very accurate. Their coding app is absolutely brilliant to the fact they allow you to even use expert mode. That is just a must for anybody. If you're willing to do retrofits, you can actually FDL code. You know, Bimmer code are leading the way to the point you will no longer need to use eSystem and ISTA and all this kind of stuff to be able to diagnose and code your car. Hopefully in time, they'll bring in where you can program your car also. So thank you very much for watching guys and I hope you've enjoyed this video from Bimmerlink. Thank you very much and goodbye.